Yes. The Bible compares spiritual growth to a seed, a building, and a child growing up. Each metaphor requires active participation. Seeds must be planted and cultivated. Buildings must be built. They don't just appear, and children must eat and exercise to grow. We must change the way we think. Let the Spirit change your way of thinking. The Bible says we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. The Greek word for transformed metamorph uh, metamorphosis used in Romans uh, 12, I think page 12, section 2 or paragraph 2 or something. I don't actually know. It's 12, two dots. I don't even know what these are called. Uh, 2 and 2 Corinthians 3.18. Is used today to describe the amazing change a caterpillar goes through in becoming a butterfly. It is a beautiful picture of what happens to us spiritually when we allow God to direct our thoughts. We are changed from this inside out, we become more beautiful, and we are set free to soar, uh, soar, S O A R, to new heights. And I do once again want to point out, just because I'm reading it, and it should kind of be a staple here uh, when I'm going through this book. I do not necessarily am the most religious person and I am not really the opposite as well. I know I'm, I'm something in between, but I do want to point out that this is heavily religious. Um, it, whatever religion it is about um, depends, I guess. I think he never, well, he mentioned things and he also mentions the Bible. So I think it is quite clear that me uh, rephrase, but I do want to say that I think it really makes sense to listen to this book or listen to whatever I'm reading here. And when you're also reading it and willing to read it, that you're not necessarily taking it literal, but you, you know, you kind of could read it as something uh, non-fiction like work, you know, which means that, well, and or just something that is a bit more philosophical, which also means and which is going to lead you to seeing things not literal, you know, but more or less as uh, metaphors and or ways of saying things with, without actually saying what you want to say, you know, things are kind of uh, masked in, in some or the other way. And so I think it also makes sense to, to use this point of view and this worldview when you're going through this book and when you're listening to this episode or watching this episode, since um, I do really understand that it might be putting people off when it is just so heavily religious on the other hand i can also really emphasize with people and just you know understand when it is the complete opposite you know people like it even more because they themselves are really religious themselves so i think it is about trying to get the most out of this book um, without necessarily being of the same opinion as the author is i think this uh, was actually pretty well said i'm not gonna lie Becoming like Christ is no longer a slow process of growth. Spiritual maturity is neither instant nor automatic. It is a gradual progressive development that will take the rest of your life. You are a work in progress. Your spiritual transformation in developing the character of Jesus will take the rest of your life and even then it won't be completed here on earth. It will only be finished when you get to heaven or when Jesus returns. Which might be taken as a what just happened? Um, this might be taken as a way of calming yourself down, not taking everything so seriously, and also just not trying to be the best at everything all the time. Meaning, um, okay, I, I know that I'm not going to be able to finish in this life, you know, but um, I'm going to be able to finish somewhere else, whether you believe in heaven or not, you know. Um, I think it is just kind of calming you. Like, okay, I don't have to be the best at this, you know. I don't just have to sacrifice my whole life to do this, that, and these and those, unless this is something I really want to do, you know. This is my passion and my uh, inspiration and what gets me through the day. Of course, this is something different, you know. This might be also the exact same conversation we could have when it is about, you know, success and sacrificing your quote-unquote youth your time or whatnot for the sake of you know being rich and whatnot and obviously some people are going to say well yeah you know they do not want to do that on the other hand there's also going to be a ton of people that say well yes i did that and or i am going to do that and i actually also really like to do so you know i like to 
quote unquote, sacrifice my time um, for just the sake of getting rich um, or building a business or whatnot. And obviously, this is something they enjoy. You know, they wouldn't be doing this if they didn't enjoy it. You know, they like the grind, the hustle, quote unquote, and just, you know, building things and whatever it might be about, you know, we all are different. And I think it also really is important to know oneself, know thyself and, um, you know, trying to understand oneself and trying to understand one's capabilities and um, also talents to just, you know, create a life and plan a life that is going to be optimal for you. You know, not optimal for your neighbor, your friend, your mother, whoever it might be about but for you, you know, because you are an individual. And this is a fucking fact, I'd say. You know, unless, you know, there is some sort of a of a twin you have and or, the, you know, there is a possibility that there is going to be somebody that looks like you. I don't know, though, if this person is going to, well, speak like you probably as well, but if this person is also going to behave like you, you know, just some genetical, uh, I don't know. Uh, your heavenly father's goal is for you to mature and develop the characteristics of Jesus Christ. Sadly, millions of Christians grow older but never grow up. They are stuck in a perpetual spiritual infancy, remaining in diapers and booties. The reason is that they never intended to grow. Spiritual growth is not automatic. It takes an intentional commitment. You must want to grow, decide to grow and make an effort to grow and persist in growing, period. Yeah. Uh, discipleship, the process of becoming like Christ, always begins with a decision. You know, that decision to start the process. Anyway. <laughs> thinking of others is the heart of Christ-likeness and the best evidence of spiritual growth. This kind of thinking is unnatural, countercultural, and rare and difficult. But I don't think that it is unnatural. I made the, this example that I'm going to make right now. Or I'm going to bring up right now uh, a ton of times before. But I think back in the days, you know, in very ancient times, it would have also made sense to be social, you know, and therefore think about other people, think about what you can do for them. Because um, we hopefully were in a group, a group of people, and this was our safety, you know. Being alone was not a good idea and was not a good thing because there were predators and those predators would have fucked you and ripped you into pieces very, very quickly. So it really made sense to stay in groups. And well, obviously, one also has to kind of contribute something to the group. You know, I think that people would not have dragged you all along, you know, all this uh, time. You know, whether it's about the tribes that are wandering around all the time or just people that have already settled. Uh... I would argue that nobody would have just, you know, taken care of you if it didn't contribute to the whole, quote-unquote, society and all the whole thing. So I think it is rather natural to be social and try to, to you know, let others benefit of your work or whatever it might be than just to be egoistic, even though this always makes sense. I guess that, you know, um, when in doubt, one would think about oneself, you know, and one wouldn't sacrifice oneself when in doubt but you know it really depends on the conversation right now anyway counterculture i think it depends on the culture you know uh i would say that the culture that i'm living in in the midst of europe and austria um is rather egoistic you know really i don't know if it's if it's us you know the people or if it is you know well people are part of culture or whether it is just some other parts of culture. But I would rather say that we are, you know, egoistic. Anyway, living the rest of your life for the glory of God will require a change in your priorities, your schedule, your relationships and everything else. It will sometimes mean choosing a different path instead of an easy one. Even Jesus struggled with this. Which, and I think this kind of also emphasizes what I meant before, like my... Uh, you know, what, what can I call it? Anyway, you know, you know what I mean. Um, saying, even Jesus, Jesus struggled with this. I think this is very important to point out. Also, very important to point out by the Bible uh, for readers of the Bible. Because um, this just illustrates that Jesus also struggled. You know, literally struggled. And so it is fine for you as well to struggle. 
it is okay, you know, nobody's perfect, even Jesus wasn't perfect. And so this just, you know, once again, makes you feel at ease, you know, makes you feel like, okay, it is fine sometimes to just not be at your best, to struggle sometimes, to just have difficulties in life sometimes. This is completely fine. And thinking about it in this way, um, which, you know, does not have anything to do with, you know, being religious or not, I think this is a great message, you know, in whatever book it might be. You know, and also in philosophical works, like, okay, even this great philosopher, you know, let's take so Socrates or uh, Marcus Aurelius, also they struggled, you know, and also they had difficulties in life and also problems and whatnot. And so it is fine for you to as well have problems. I think this, um, I don't know, like, might just be uh, evening out things. Like, okay, you know, this is, even though it is a godlike uh, person, this person isn't perfect, you know, and so you do not as well have to be perfect. Or you can work on, on the things that, that you're having problems with, you know, everything is, um, you know, you're able to, to work out things quite well, and so on and so forth. Like, yeah, just struck my mind. Living on a purpose is the only way to really live. Everything else is just existing. Which I, by the way, also often think about, like, Am I really just existing or am I actually also living? And, um, well, really depends on the day and, uh, well. And there is the quote once again. It all starts with God. It is not about you. Unless you assume a God, the question of life's purpose is meaningless. Bertrand Russell. The purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment, your peace of mind or even your happiness. It's farther... It's far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dreams and ambitions. If you want to know why you were placed in this planet, you must begin with God. You were born by his purpose and for his purpose. So by his purpose and for his purpose, because it is in italic and therefore should be emphasized. Um, and I think this, once again, also illustrates what I meant by, you know, seeing this work as something rather philosophical and not necessarily literal. Okay, let's assume a God or something that is godlike, whatever this might be for you, you know, really depends now. Some people want to believe in God, which is like some mighty power that is, um, you know, able to create and destroy everything. Um, on the other hand, you could also choose to, uh, you know, just call something not God, which still has the same capabilities and abilities, and, you know, just thinking about it as some higher force that can do something, and that can whatever. You know what I mean? Like, uh, just taking the concept of the book, and or this quote, you know, in, in this case, and, and use it for your sake, you know, and build it differently, and rephrase it so that it can serve you, rather than kind of piss you off, or whatever. Anyway, um, you are made by God and for God, and until you understand that, life will never make sense. It is only in God that we discover our origin, our identity, our meaning, our purpose, our significance, and our destiny. Every other path leads to an, a dead end. Fortunately, there is an alternative to speculation about the meaning and purpose of life. It's revelation. We can turn to what God has revealed to us about life in his word. The easiest way to discover the purpose of an invention is to ask the creator of it. The same is true for discovering your life's purpose. Ask God. God wants us, uh, I'm sorry, wants to use you to make a difference in his world. He wants to work through you. What matters is not the duration of your life, but the donation of it. Not how long you live, but how you've lived. Um, which, you know, is actually very stoic, by the way. You know, I think Seneca said that. Might actually be wrong there, but... Um, something along the lines of, uh, it doesn't matter how long your life is, but uh, kind of the quality of your life, something like that, you know, which is not necessarily something that I agree with, I think that just needs to be a certain balance, um, kind of, even though, you know, who wants to live unhappily, but just, you know, very long, this is kind of, you know, pretty painful, as I think about it, but still, um, thinking about it in that way, you know, there is a higher force. And, um, well, there is something that I am living for. And this certain thing just, uh, you know, this is my faith. 
I don't let's, let's call it faith. And um, whatever happens in the world is meant by this faith. You know, and I'm also going to do what my faith wants me to do. Because this is apparently what I'm just here for. For this higher power. This high, higher power that wants me to do something, you know. And I'm always trying to serve this power. Obviously, you know, one can really uh, interpret a ton in this, which can lead to some negative outcomes, like, you know, uh, okay, uh, this higher power wants me to, you know, do some criminalistic things. Not good. Um, but this could also be just something completely different. Once again, seeing it as something not literal and, um, you know, thinking about it as something rather uh, philosophical, um, like a guide to things. You know, the concepts are good. Well, depends on how you see things, but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to see you the next time. Bye-bye.